It's not a meeting to order. Uh, like other meetings, just some housekeeping. Memorial Day is Thursday, July 1st. Royal Canadian Legion Branch 33 presents you will commemorate Memorial Day to the ceremony of remembrance and wreath laying at 11 a.m. on July 1st, 2021 at the Cenograph at the Legion Road in Placentia. Any veteran, community group, or member of the Royal Canadian Legion wishing to participate in the ceremony is asked to contact the Sergeant at Arms to register at 227-4913 by June 30th, 2021. Those wishing to place a memorial wreath are asked to register by contacting Wayne Power at 227-4913, phone or text, or Ian Welsh at 227-2507, or email poppyfun33 at gmail.com. Please register by 5 p.m. on June 30th, 2021. To help ensure compliance with public health guidelines, each wreath will be limited to two representatives. Public health guidelines will apply, including the use of face masks. The air of ceremony will be limited to 150 participants. Members of the general public who wish to observe the ceremony are requested to respect the established boundary. We also, for Canada Day, the town will be having fireworks and dusk at Canada Day from uh, Fort Frederick. Uh, we will encourage people to maintain distancing as well. Fireworks will be at dusk at Fort Uh We have the ability to have large gatherings are looking encouraging for August, and I understand the tourism department will be offering some community events. Those events will certainly be most welcome to boost the community spirit after such a long year. We're hoping that come August, everything will get a little bit more activity. Like to call now for the adoption of the agenda date June 29, 2021. Moved by Council Collins, second. Council Smith. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carried. The purpose of next meeting is to discuss the opportunity or the availability of to do the mail in voting in the upcoming municipal election. And I'll ask the CEO, Robert Bogarty, to explain the council. Thank you. Uh, the province has present, presented us two options for voting this year. One is mail-in, and in order to do mail-in, you have to, council has to adopt regulations. Um, in the agenda package, the uh, draft regulations are prepared, or uh, council can choose to vote as they had done in the past through in-person and through proxy. Based on how um, the rollout has happened and my experience uh, through training and through talking to other municipalities, my recommendation is that we remain with the in-person and proxy method. Uh, there's been some changes in, in over the last week. There's some extended some deadlines the province has. They, they've also, at first they said that they weren't gonna develop regulations and after regulations were developed there seems to be a lot of uncertainty and I don't believe at this time um, that the regulations and the methods are understood and I believe we, we could be taking some risks should we proceed. Okay, uh, thank you Rob. So I guess it's from the mail-in voting only. We do a mail-in voting, there are several regulations and you know, obviously from listening to the CAO, it's not uh, uh, cast in stone, not cast iron, and you know, he feels that it would be uh, not beneficial for us at this time to do a proxy mail-in vote only. Rather to do the traditional vote of voting in person or by proxy. Does anybody want to make a motion one way or the other? Make a motion that council authorize residents to vote in person or proxy in the upcoming 2021 municipal election. Okay, moved by the deputy mayor, the council authorize residents to vote in person or proxy only in the opening 2021 municipal election. Seconded by Councillor Hines. Any questions? 
I have a question with respect to um, so the, the, re the regulations and methods, the risk that we would run through mail in versus the in person. I guess the CAO should just expand on that a bit. Uh, the, the, the risks, I believe, is that the process hasn't been tested, and I believe there may be some or increased risks of misunderstanding amongst the public and possible errors in the procedures as they haven't been tested. Thank you, Robert. Can I answer your question? Can I touch it? Please go ahead. Okay. Um, another question. Um, what measures are we taking to ensure that the voter uh, registration roll is, is updated as well? So at this point we've received the, the roll from the province on the last election. My understanding is that the roll is not up to date, but we are going to review the roll and uh, clean it up as best as we can for the election. If someone is not on the roll, they still can vote through an affirmation process which traditionally was as in previous elections. Right. It, but it is my understanding that you have been reviewing the role and the role is going to be updated and you know pretty soon you're working to get an updated role as close as we can. A follow-up question to that. Uh, with respect to the role that does currently exist, will, will we be publishing that so people can confirm that they're on that role and then make contact with the town in order to get on the roll? We, we will follow all the regulations uh, that, um, that uh, apply to uh, the role. We had to be careful there are private privacy issues with releasing the, the, the whole role as, as is, uh, but we, we, are, we did we had make contact to use a software that we used in the past where people could look their, uh, look their name up to see if they were on the roll. Can we actually maybe have a opportunity or have an, a venue or do something there that people are concerned? Maybe we can set up a, a you know election email address so people want to make sure that their name is, and we can probably just have a form so that if anybody is do that, that they can probably accept such a form and uh, you know add it to your criteria of the election. Uh, obviously, at any election, I guess there is a form that you come in and you know once the election is clearly identified. I believe you have to be a resident 30 days, uh, you know, into a municipality. So somebody can technically move in here, you know, uh, 31 days beforehand and they can come in, they can swear an affidavit that they have not voted in any other municipality and that they are now a resident of position and they wish to vote there. And once they do that and sign that and provide the uh, proper identification, then uh, there's no reason that they are not permitted to vote. Any other questions, Councilor Fitzpatrick? No, that's not a question. Okay. Yeah, I do have a couple. Yeah, uh, yes. Question is, uh, what process will be in place to ensure that it's a safe election, given that now we're still in a pandemic? So compared to other elections, we will have enhanced cleaning process, which would require um, a little bit more st uh, election staff. Um, the province has requested uh, that all municipalities have these processes in place so there will be cleaning down of pencils and death uh, and, and voting booths as as people come through so it may take a little bit of extra time to vote but you know we want to be safe and we want to ensure that we provide a, uh, a clean uh, facility for people to uh, vote in. I would expect that yes, we will be following the regulations set up by the chief and the team surrounding such public advocacy. Uh, one more, Mayor. Uh, what would happen if our area was in an outbreak or a lockdown for our zone? Uh, you know, what would the process be? Is there a process in place that uh, you know, and who makes the decision on the election? So the. Uh, the returning officer may delay an election up to, I believe, it's seven days. Any more delays past that will have to go to municipal affairs. Uh, so that would be the procedure. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy. Any other questions? Thanks, Mayor. Also, uh, being a staff member in uh, the Eastern Health, Eastern Health has 
different policies and the other agencies like personal care homes. So we have to make sure that they're included also, but we also have to give, you know, probably give the, the agencies like their, their notification that we're looking at setting up again for voting for that purpose because they have different rules and regulations separately for the problems, you know, for yeah. people going in more. And it's covered again, Council Down, yep. under the uh, elections uh, protocol. So obviously, uh, you know, the CEO is uh, the returning officer. will be following all the regulations and guidelines with these special polling stations, etc. Yes, Councilor Fletcher. I just want to expand on that Councilor Donaldson's point, but the um, the guidelines and measures that are in place by the province for facilities such as long-term care homes and Eastern Health can have additional measures put in place, so that's something that needs to be considered, which wouldn't be covered in the uh, Elections Act. Um, their protocols sometimes are more, <laughs> more than what the, the guidelines are, and it's for the protection of their clients um, and their staff. So that's something we do want to consider and to, to have those conversations, because I know that we have had polling booths in those facilities in the past. Yes. Okay. So obviously, uh, CEO, you can explore all that. Make sure that we're following uh, the guidelines and regulations, and not only municipal fair ones, but also the places such as the homes that we're talking about that we may end up having set up a special. One one thing that we have done is we have confirmed with the province that the mobile uh, voting polling stations are still allowable in this election. So we'll work with all of the stakeholders to ensure that all the rules are followed. Councilor Hunt. Uh, are there any are there many municipalities other municipalities, you know, uh, looking to go with this or not go with this? Is there any status set for that? Um, I believe that it's still developing, but based on the, the polling I've done, I I I, I would say there's not. It's not. A, it's not going to be a, a large majority of towns that are going to go forward with it. I guess with all the uncertainty, there's certainly uh, possibly more reluctance than move forward because of the uncertainty of the regulations. Anybody else? Okay. Hearing none. Call for the question. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Thank you. I think that's no further business. Everyone's okay. We'll thank everybody for coming in. So I'm not sure, Rob, if you needed a specific vote to not vote by mail, but I think the uh, motion by the deputy clearly identified the process that we are going to Okay. Will that take care of the, the matter at hand? Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Fitzpatrick, second by Councillor Collins. All in favor? Meeting adjourned.